Hello everyone, welcome to another lecture and today we'll discuss something about common viral infection that we see that is measles. And uh, before I begin, I would like to uh, request you to like, share and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And let's begin today's session. So measles. Now this uh, measles is a acute viral disease. Measles is a acute viral disease which was uh, discovered by a Scottish physician names, named Francis Home in 1757 and it is caused by a virus and what is the vi virus called? Morbili or rubiola virus or rubiola virus. So it is a genus of paramyxoviridae. Para Mixo VRD and it is a morbili or a rubiola virus and it is a, a common infection that occurs in children. Now, uh, what happened was that uh, USA uh, some years ago they declared that okay, uh, there is no no measles there, uh, measles were eliminated there, and then again cases came. So I don't know the current status that if the disease is eliminated there or not. If you know, please comment down below. Uh, measles is an important disease in India where we get multiple patients with measles. And it usually, uh, we know that there is only one serotype. There is only one serotype and it is an enveloped, enveloped, single stranded negative sense rna uh, virus so this is about something about the measles virus itself and it the pathogenesis is that the measles uh, you know is a exanthematous disease that occurs in you know tonsils or the uh, conjunctiva gi tract and it also causes a specific pneumonia called as hect pneumonia hect pneumonia hect pneumonia and it is a giant uh, cell pneumonia that occurs specifically in patients of measles now measles is the incubation period is 10 to 14 days as you all know 10 days for the fever and 14 days for the rash so fever occurs 10 days after and on the 14th day the rash appears and some books say that it is eight. It is eight to twelve days. The most accepted is ten to fourteen days, so you have to keep that in mind. Now it it has a secondary attack rate around ninety percent. So nine out of ten unvaccinated people will get measles if they come in contact with uh, patients having measles. So that is something about the disease. Now the, infect, the infectious period is four days, four days, four days before to four to four days after the rash appears. So after the rash appears, uh, like uh, the four days before and four days after the rash appears, uh, we say that uh, it is an incubation. Uh, it is it is in an infective period of measles, and as you all know, the measles virus vaccination is that is done at the age of nine months because up to six to eight months there are presence of maternal antibodies which may cross react with the vaccine, and usually infants are protected up to the age of six to eight months because of the passive immunity that passes to the child through the mother. Now, what are the risk factors for, what are the risk, risk factors for severe measles infection or even measles infection? So, immunodeficient children, immunodeficient children like having HIV or having leukemia or undergoing any chemotherapy, they are more susceptible to the uh, measles. And also you have to remember that those who have taken corticosteroids. So even they are considered immunodeficient. Now, 
or other risk factor is travel to endemic areas like india india is an endemic area and some infants use their uh, lose their passive immunity infants who lose passive immunity early who lose passive immunity early so these are the high risk groups again malnourished patients are at higher risk the severe acute malnourished at are at the highest risk and vitamin a deficiency as you know that we give mega doses of vitamin a with measles vaccine at 9 months and there are total 9 mega doses of uh, you know vitamin a that are given to the newborn so even vitamin a deficiency might predispose to the measles infection now what are the clinical features of measles so the classical symptoms are the quadrad of uh, you know day fever the fever that occurs during the day the day fever and 3 c so cough or is a and the third one is conjunctivitis conjunctivitis so these four are the hallmark features of you know measles uh, there are three stages one is incubation period that lasts from 10 to 12 days and then it is followed by a prodrome a prodrome what occurs during the prodrome there is fever there is fever cough oryza myalgia okay then there is presence of something known as complex spots second molar complex spots are present on day 2 to day 3 of fever and these are the grayish white dots they are grayish white dots surrounding uh, surrounded by the reddish areas and they are usually found in the buccal mucosa then there is presence of conjunctival conjunctival congestion and the fever is usually high grade and it may reach up to 104 degree fahrenheit now on the 14th day the rash appears now what is the nature of rash it is maculopapular it is maculopapular and it is erythematous erythematous and this uh, this rash is you know it begins at the hairline begins at the hairline it begins at the hairline and then spreads to the body and the trunk then spreads to the body then spreads to the body and when this occurs when a, when the rash is spreading there is increase a probability of high grade fever so this rash appears and then the fever spikes increase and in uncomplicated measles what happens is when the rash appears and when the rash appears in the hairline then it goes down to the body and once it reaches the feet usually the patient starts improving at that point the patient starts improving and uh, the the upper part of the body starts to recover from the rash and the fever slowly slowly stops and at the 7 to 10th day there is desquamation desquamation and the patient gradually improves in uncomplicated measles in complicated measles there might be you know multiple features and then there is something known as black measles that is hemorrhagic measles so this black measles or hemorrhagic measles what happens is that there is bleeding from mouth nose or bowel so this is a hemorrhagic uh, you know hemorrhagic pre presence of the hemorrhagic manifestations of measles and there is associated a lymphadenitis with all forms of measles there might be some form of lymphadenitis present occipital might also present and they usually subside with the subsidation of complex spots so all these features are that of measles now uh, the diagnosis of measles the diagnosis is clinical so clinical diagnosis of measles is important but uh, the confirmatory test is igm for measles antibody IG, igm measles antibody is the investigation of the choice and you can also do rt pcr and even uh, you can also 
you know do other tests like isolation of the virus it is not recommended and it is only used for typing but uh, it can also be done but it is not preferred here like uh, everywhere or clinically igm measles antibody is the investigation of choice we prefer for the diagnosis of measles now what are the complications of a measles infection complications so when i say complications the most common complication is otitis media otitis media it is the most common complication and then there is a hemorrhagic measles itself bleeding so it is a manifestation then there may be exacerbation of vitamin a deficiency so there is keratitis and all forms of xerophthalmia and the conjunctival or the corneal cirrhosis might occur then uh, there might be also respiratory system involvement called as hacked giant cell pneumonia hacked giant cell pneumonia and it is usually a secondary infection by staph staphylo or streptococcus now there is a rare infection called as sspe it occurs one in every 25000 cases what happens uh, here is that after 10 to 25 years of initial measles infection this uh, there is a you know this happens there is sub acute sclerosing and and see flightus now uh, some sources say that it occurs after 7 to 10 years some books say that it occurs after 20, 10 to 25 years but you should know that it is a disease that occurs after adolescence it does not occur in children it usually occurs in young adults and adolescents and usually what happens is that earlier the measles infection higher the risk of ssp so early measles infection or early onset measles infection is a risk factor what happens is that the patient suddenly has personality changes personality changes and mental deterioration there is mental clouding mental deterioration and the hallmark feature of sspe is a myoclonic jerk myoclonic jerk essentially whenever you see myoclonic jerk anywhere with any patients myoclonic jerk is usually it usually means that the brain is you know massively involved and it is not a good prognosis myoclonus if present with any disease or if even if it is a type of epilepsy like myoclonic epilepsy it is usually present with poorer prognosis compared to its other variants so myoclonic jerk is a hallmark and diagnosis of sspe is done by igg of measles in csf in the csf if you do eeg of this patient eeg of this patient you find something known as ready makers complex ready makers complex is seen in the eeg of the patients and the treatment of this condition is inosine pranobex isoprenosine it is also called as isoprenosine and the name is inosine pranobex now what this inosine pranobex does it it stimulates the thymus for formation of interferons to fight off this disease because this is a viral disease and it is a mutated virus so there is no other drug available for the patients of ssp it also might cause the measles complication also might cause a demyelination a localized demyelination areas in the brain and it is usually an autoimmune reaction autoimmune reaction to measles virus so it is one of the it, it looks like something like a localized multiple sclerosis in a area of the brain post measles post measles bronchopneumonia is also a common complication and it is usually uh, is usually due to streptococcus staphylococcus or hemophilus and you know it may lead later to multiple other complications related to ards and respiratory failure other complications include gbs or bulbar neuritis bulbar neuritis myocarditis and if a mother when she is pregnant has measles uh, it increases the chance of presence of a low birth weight child so have to keep that in 
mind. Now, you have to keep uh, one thing in mind that the treatment of measles, treatment of measles is usually symptomatic. Symptomatic. And you should not again give aspirin. It might cause complication. You can give paracetamol. You can give uh, vitamin A syrup. And you can uh, provide respiratory support if the patient is very, very sick. Now, uh, what is the dosage of vitamin A syrup? That is 2, two lakh IU for more than 12, uh, 12 months of age. 1 lakh, 1 lakh IU. If 6 months to 12 months and 50k IU for less than 6 months of age. So this is the dosing you have to give to the patients uh, with white, even vitamin deficiency and even with, uh, you know, the infection of measles and uh, you should know that measles is an infectious disease. So isolation is a very important part of uh, treatment of measles. And with that, the last part of measles is the measles vaccine. Now, firstly, you have to know that when do you have to isolate the patient? So seventh day of exposure. From seventh day of exposure, exposure to after five days of rash appearance, of rash appearance, you have to isolate the patient and then you can, you know, uh, unquarantine the patient. And the vaccine is, you all know that it is, which variant it is, Edmonstone Zagreb strain that is used for creation of uh, measles. And there are uh, there are three commonly used vaccines: measles rubella, measles mumps rubella, and measles mumps rubella and varicella. So there are these are the four different vaccines that you have to know. This Edmonstone Zagreb or the measles vaccine is a life attenuated vaccine. And you all know that where do we have where do we give what is the advantage of live attenuated vaccine and where do we do not give live attenuated vaccine. And this is a two-dose schedule, two-dose schedule. And in some countries, they give the vaccine as early as six months. Here we give at nine months and then we can follow it up after six months to 12 months of age. So it is usually given between 12 months of age to 15 months of age in the patients. The vaccine is extremely efficacious uh, in prevention of all the complications of measles. And a uh, last part is that immunoglobulin are may be used in a severe, you know, severe uh, measles patients. But again, it has a very, very limited role and it is only given in immunocompromised patients. I guess that's all for today, guys. And I hope you like the video. If you like the video, please comment down below and like, share and subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you in the next one.